Okay, so welcome to construction site black day testing. Ladies and gents, hello and welcome to the arm training channel. Recently, I had to do a well unscheduled lactate test uh, in the midst of all the reconstruction that's going on here at the Biro workshop. And as I got a question from some of my athletes how I do the testing, I bought a GoPro, put it on my forehead. <laughs> it feels a bit ridiculous to do this and simply filmed uh, parts of the process. So what to do when. And with this video right now, I wanna show you what it looks like from a point of view, what are some of the tricks that I use to get good results. Okay, so what you need is one of these. This is to sting down it later on. Now that is the part where I prepare everything to sting. So the way it usually works is that you sting one tiny hole into the ear. Now there are various ways to do the lactate test. You know, some institutes like to sting every single time to take blood. For me, there's no use. First, you have a perforated earlobe. And second, when you start to squeeze out blood here, then all of a sudden blood comes out from the other hole. It's, it's unnecessary. It's completely unnecessary. So I get one of these tiny, tiny holes and that's more than sufficient. Sometimes, sometimes, and that was an instance where it didn't work in the first attempt, it didn't work. The hole was too small. So well, I made another one and that worked. So Daniel, where are we going to start? 180 watts. Okay, and why 180? You want to rinse out lactate, yeah. excess lactate, that is already in your system now. Okay, so we're gonna do six minute stages. We're gonna start off with 180 watts. I, I think you can start, it's good. Oh. Now the protocol that I typically use is six minutes, a stage for six minutes. There is no such thing as a lactate steady state, but if you want something of a proximity and not be too time consuming, six minutes is the route to go rather than three or four minutes. The HR and then we will do the the lactate. So it's, we, we draw a very simple chart. So there are three essential values we need. What were the watts, what was the HR, the heart rate, and what were the measured results in terms of lactate. We will do 30 watt increments. So you're going to be at 210, 240, 270, 300, and 330. So the latter are a bit of a question mark because we have to see, you know, the moment we are above seven, there's no use to test. And the reason is that in, in, for the stage that we are at right now, there's, we don't need more than that. Now, what I like to prepare in this, <laughs> of course, you need the lactate test kit. So I use the lactate pro two, uh, works nicely. Results are, as I can tell, pretty reliable. Now the question is when you start. So I know that Daniel's 180 watt is like a walk in the park. Usually uh, that was a post-race analysis. So a post-race lactate analysis or post-race post lactate test usually has a bit of different rule sets. And the race that he did, he was a cyclist, is pretty, it was pretty taxing for his body. And that meant that he had still a lot of lactate even two days after race in his system, which is quite unique, I have to say. But he wasn't super fit before the race as well. He caught a cold, a pretty long, sturdy cold, and he just got over it before the race. So usually you start out with a low, a low wattage and then you work your way up in 30 watt increments. You can also do 20 watt increments. The upside is you have more accurate values. The downside is that you have, um, it's more load for the body. So you may not end up with very reliable results as you get into the higher watt spheres. I need a couple of these to clean. So, and then we've got the test stripes. They're quite expensive. I think they're two and a half euros per, per piece. Now the test device that I use is Elected Pro 2. I don't make any money with this. If you want to go ahead and buy it, go ahead and buy it. I think it's roughly three, four hundred euros or dollars. Um, I, I think it works quite nicely. I haven't had any glitches with it so far. Um, what they make their money with is simply the test drives. I think they are overpriced at two and a half euros. It's a joke. Uh, there's nothing to it. Um, but again, they have to make money somehow. The other option I was referring to was a biosyn. That's like the gold standard of lactate testing. Most laboratories have that. And I was able to use one of these and they cost about five to 10,000 euros used. And of course the material, so the, the test equipment you need, um, like these little capsules with the liquid and you still need to stench, so you need needles. It's not for free as well. And then I read a study, I, I can't find it anymore. Maybe you can find it where up to 10 millimoles of lactate 
uh, the deviation from the standard laboratory devices was like 0.1 minimal of lactate, which for me is irrelevant. So I'd rather go with a small system where I get the result in 15 seconds. Well, well, I mean, this entire setup is so much cheaper than what we had before. So this is uh, 360 euros, two and a half euros per stripe versus the biosin we had before, which was like, I don't know, five to 10,000 euros used. So what I'd like to do is, uh, these things are quite, a, quite tricky to, to get out of the package. So I open it in advance and then I try to get it out, which likes is, yeah, well, doesn't always work properly. Yeah, getting these things out of the packaging, these stripes, is a pain. The reason is that you have to push this thing all the way to one side and then make sure you rip it straight. And if it doesn't rip straight, you have half open and then you, you kind of can't get it out. And if you use scissors, you may damage the stripe. It's a pain. I'm, I don't know why I haven't come up with a better system, but that's what it is right now. You know, if you do more of these tests, you kind of get the hang on it, you know how to do it. So you hold it and then try to have, um, try to rip it open straight. And well, it's, it's almost craftsmanship to get these things open, but it is what it is. So I got this one out. I think I didn't touch this one, but it's the first value. So it's not that relevant, but nevertheless, you know, so I'm gonna prepare this one. So we need one, two, three, four, five. Well, four secured. So we have three more. Daniel, how much longer? About two minutes. Two minutes to go, okay. So I will open this one. And the way it works is you push this button, push that button and a needle shoots, shoots out. So leave it in there for now so everything's prepared. What I do now, just to, just to be on the safe side, I. I put it in, but not all the way. If you put it in all the way, it will start to record and there's nothing to record. So I just put it in slightly and now I'm all ready to go. You need one of these. The reason why I was keen on not touching the sensor is because you always have a bit of sweat on your hands, always. And sweat contaminates blood for lactate testing in such a way that you do have very high lactate values as a readout, although the actual lactate values of the blood of the, of, of the athlete are not as high. So you need to be careful about this, not to touch anything, and certainly not to contaminate um, the blood with, with even one drop of sweat. As long as there's not much sweat on your ear, it's all good. Ja, Schätzle, ich muss da jetzt oben sein. Wir machen Laktattest beim Daniel. Den Schweißheim kannst du ausprobieren, ja? Okay, so we've got 15 seconds to go. The first one always takes a bit longer because you have to sting. So what I do is, I prepare either sensor stripe and let it, let it rest right next to, the, to um, the Electro Pro 2 device or the other option would be to stick it in halfway so the sensor doesn't go off, it doesn't recognize the sensor yet, but the moment I walk to the athlete, I stick it in all the way, I massage, the, I, I clean off the, the blood crust from the one drop, then I massage a drop of blood out, I wipe this one off as well and then I take the second one as a fresh one. So you can already place yourself here. It's the last couple of seconds. So the question is where you do it? I like to do it right here. Did it hurt? Oh. And then comes the tricky part. You have to find where you actually, where you got the hole. first two are real because that's what he still had from the race that's what he actually had at 210 and 240 means 2.8 heart rate 154. 154 so concerning the results so we had I think 2.3 2.3 and then 2.8 that is a spectacular high usually you start off with 1.5 then it drops to 0.8 then it may drop to 0.7 then it goes to 1.2 1.52 and so on so this shows that Adani was everything but not fit at that day. This is, I think, the worst results I've ever seen from him. And that is largely due to the cold he had before and the race. Not a good combo, but he wanted to do it. And the thing is that if you get 
always 2.3, 2.3, 2.3, you know, something's wrong with the device. But having by accident 2.3 and then 2.3 and then 2.8 showed me that no, it's actually the athlete. Now the heart rate is not the average, it's actually what you see. So you always monitor what the heart rate is. So right now, 148, okay, after a quick break. But in about two minutes, you can actually have a look at the heart rate and see, okay, if the heart rate then is around, what, say, 150, 156, whatever you see, the last three minutes, two to three minutes on a consistent basis will be the true heart rate you have in training. Most people go by average heart rate, which I think is wrong because it takes into consideration the, the first two minutes you need it to get into your heart rate zone and the last minute maybe where it's a bit off or too high. So even if we included the last minute, the first two minutes will actually create a massive deviation from the typical heart rate you will then have later in training. Because what I do with the results, I look at the typical heart rate you had as a readout. So you should look at it, what does it say? Okay, look at it again the last four minutes or so of a six minute stage. And then make an educated guess what the heart rate was. And this may sound a bit too vague for you, but trust me, it's more reliable than looking at averages. Just because technology allows us or enables us to do something, it doesn't mean that whatever we measure actually makes sense. And an average heart rate or duration of a six minute step test is actually, it, it is possible to measure, but the result is useless. So now there's already a bit of sweat building up. I'm going to get the old crust off. Try to get a fresh drop of blood. The first one you wipe it off and massage some more blood out. And that's the one you can take. There you go. 3.9 heart rates. 163. So once you have all your results down, I usually stop at seven millimoles. So because the, the, the Lactopro 2 gives me results within 15 seconds, um, for me, it's quite convenient. I get the result immediately. So, hey, you're 7.2, we can stop. And I've made a previous video about how we did the test and it actually works quite well this way. The reason why I don't go above seven is because I don't really want to know how much lactate um, the athlete can produce. Um, that has a lot to do with the, the one to seven millimole stage how the body works and that has a lot to do with lack of scientific knowledge uh, or lack of scientific proof that the anaerobic threshold has anything to do with four millimoles of lactate that's the ominous level i made a video about this uh, just recently that four millimoles is not your anaerobic threshold or the rq1 and as nobody can actually know whether or not you're in the right zone now i measure everything from one to seven and that's also how i make the training planes so that we continuously work in stages between one and seven minimal of lactate. So we can be sure that we spend more time than other people in the right intensity zones for that day. If you want to work with me, go to rmtraining.com. This is where you find all the offers that we have. So you can do live training sessions with us, one-on-ones with us. You can get comprehensive training plans with one-on-ones or live team sessions or simply a training plan to get started. I see you in the next video. All the best. Thank you for watching. Bye-bye.